This play received three Olivier Awards in 2023 for the Best Actor, Best Supporting Actress, and Best Revival. And now the time has come for me to go and see this play and tell you if it's worth the hype. I'm talking about A Streetcar Named Desire with Paul Meskel. It has been on the run at Almeida Theatre in North London and now has moved to West End, to Phoenix Theatre, and that's where I'm going tonight. I've been waiting for a few months to go and see this, so I'm going to take you to theatre, show you around, tell you a little bit more about the story, and then also I will show you the view from the seats that we've got. This play, it's really hard to watch because it deals with things such as abuse and mental health issues and just like overall the intensity of the play is constantly at that level where you feel a little bit anxious. So I'm really interested to see how they manage to make it even better than all the previous revivals that existed. So come on, let's go and see if this is worth it. I'm on my way to get onto the trusted Piccadilly line because that is the line that you need to get onto in majority cases if you're going to West End because Leicester Square and Piccadilly Circus are both on that line and that's where the most theatres are located. This is the area on the tube map that I'm talking about and today we're getting off at Leicester Square as that's the closest station to the Phoenix Theatre. Most West End shows start at 7.30, so I normally aim to be there by 7 to account for any delays that could happen on the tube, long queues at the theatre and to make sure that I have enough time to grab myself a drink or a snack if I feel like one. If you're visiting London for the first time, I'd strongly recommend you aim to be there a bit sooner in case it takes you a bit of extra time to find it in case you're unfamiliar with the area. A Streetcar Named Desire was first performed on Broadway in 1947. The play follows the story of Blanche Dubois, who comes to visit her younger sister Stella and her husband Stanley in New Orleans after she's lost everything and experienced a series of personal traumas. When going to the theatre, it's important to be on time because often you will need to wait to be admitted if you arrive after the play has started, as stated on this sign here. This production also has a warning about language and themes it covers as overall it is a tough play to watch and can make some people uncomfortable. In every theatre, there is a bar where you can grab a drink and once you do that, you can head to take a seat. We were sitting in the first row of the Grand Circle, seats that were marked as restricted view, but we were able to see everything fine. We paid tickets £50 and given the popularity of the play and the view we had, I think it was a fair price. There was a rail in the way if you sit all the way back, but if you lean a bit forward you can see everything perfectly. I'm always the last one to leave the theatre, just to allow my emotions to settle before facing the world. And here is what I thought of the play. It's one of those plays that keeps you up at night, hence I'm in my bed. I want to capture these thoughts before I fall asleep because I think that there's something special about coming back from the theatre and living with that last taste of the play and I think it's really hard to replicate it in the morning. It is a really tough play so if you're going to see it prepare for emotionally draining experience because that is what this play is and these guys are not holding back. You know when you leave the theatre and then you have that weird feeling in your stomach that you just don't know how to shake off because of what you've seen? It's just a sign that the play is done brilliantly and the whole cast is amazing, but the three leads are so good. And you can tell that they've performed the show for a while now and that they're so comfortable in these roles that they are accessing that playfulness with their characters that you can only do when you're super familiar with the characters and material that you are embodying them so much. And maybe you'll go see this play because of Paul Meskel but two female leads, Patsy Ferrin and Ajana Bassan, are those you remember after the show, maybe even more than Paul, because especially Patsy has such a demanding role. Blanche is constantly on stage. She doesn't have a break at all, and she is 
incredible in bringing her anxiety and tension, mental illness and all those complex features of that character to life in such a subtle and humane way. I'm not trying to be a theatre crit critic, I'm just thinking about <laughs> everything that I've seen. And one thing that really made an incredible impression on me is the percussionist who was following dialogue and monologues with such well-crafted emphasis on the right words and emotions that at certain points you just literally jump out of your seat because of how impactful the noise was made that conveyed the meaning it really made you feel something deep in your core there's also an incredible singer who is there throughout the show which brings that mysterious and sad and kind of airy feeling to the show as well the set is very minimalistic so that makes even more incredible the way that actors interact with it because they literally don't have a way to differentiate between the room and the living room and the bathroom it's all the same square so it's even more incredible seeing them perform in such space and being able to bring the feel of that intimate and constrained space especially for these three characters without having physical barriers so yeah very very impressed with the play no wonder it got all the nominations and awards this year and that it got extended and put on west end